the other problem that we naturalists face, and it goes back to the discussion of meaning, is a naturalistic account of semantic meaning. And uh, naturalists have been working for at least 50 years uh, on this subject, and with no <coughs> uh, interesting agreed upon consensus. And here there is a divide of which Terry represents a significant uh, 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 path. Um, if we assume that the intentionality of written uh, inscriptions and vocal uh, disturbances in the air is due to the intentionality, the original intentionality of brain states, then we need an account of how brain states can represent, can be semantically evaluable, can have truth values, can express propositions via some kind of inscriptional uh, uh, devices. And at least so far, we have not had a entirely satisfactory account of how that's possible. And my own view, which stems from reading a book called Content and Consciousness a long time ago, is that owing to the fact that our brains are Darwinian systems, we will never have such an account. Now, That's not that, let me finish. No, let me, let me, let me just, that, that let me, well, I didn't say that it was in the book. I said it was <laughs> owing sure. to my reading. <laughs> uh, but, of course, there are those who say, like Terry, that the mistake in this uh, uh, identification of the problem stems from the idea that meaning, the meaning of, of speech and inscriptions is derived from the meaning of brain states and that meaning exists independently of brain states. I didn't, the last part is not what I would say. Oh, okay. No, no, absolutely, without brain states there's no meaning. But what I, I think the real problem is this identification of a thought with a brain state. Um, I, yes, our brain is going through lots of things, doing lots of things, but I would view... The meaningful content yeah, of a yeah, thought. No, so, thought. Yeah, that's right. So the meaningful content of a thought I don't think is... That, that's the identity theory that, that, I'm, that I'm troubled by. The identity theory says, and we can do it in all different ways, that I have brain state A and that's thought B. Um, my view of that is that, that that's a mistake. I think that the brain state is like the words he's typing on his computer. It represents something, but that representation is not the brain state. Yeah. Um, that is, the content, or you might say the aboutness, is not the brain state. The brain state is a, it is a medium. Uh, and just like the words typed on a computer are the sounds I'm making, that m the reference of that, the meaning of that, is not that. So, Alex, do you, do, you, do you deny externalism? Yes. Sorry, you deny externalism. Like okay. We're going to have to explain that. I know. To not yes, yes, you will. So, <laughs> I think it's really, really important if we're going to talk about it. And it, it, is, it, is, it does matter to consciousness, right? I mean, it's, <clears throat> I was getting at it in my remark a few minutes ago about needing scaffolding to construct a self. But the <clears throat> externalism about semantic meaning is a little bit simpler, right? It's the idea that uh, the meaning of a word or the meaning of anything is uh, a function of coordination among agents who use those devices to, to represent information to one another. And so part of the identity you, you, condition, you, you, part of the meaning By invoking the word represent, you have engaged in a regress, which you will now have to catch. OK, OK, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, but so, so, so let's, let's park that and agree that it must be done. But um, we use various devices for coordinating our expectations with one another. Uh, and, co and, and that coordination of expectations is itself an information sharing and conveying process. And we depend on all sorts of uh, external environmental conditions being right, some of which we also manipulate. I mean, we maintain the environmental conditions so as to maintain the stability of the conventional signs that we use. Um, that's true of words, it's true, it's true of all the components of natural language. We, we of course, convey information. We, we use a lot besides language. Right? We have conventional gestures, but we also have the social structures 
structures that we build encode all kinds of information and guide us and constrain the way we'll interpret one another. Lots of our institutional trappings are like that. That's another word you're going to have to cash in, interpret. Which one? Interpret, interpret yeah. Because mm -hmm. that's just another intentional yeah. term. But now, so, so okay, so let's look, let's, so, but first, the key externalist point is, right, a brain, a, a, a brain state thought of, a brain state of me regarded as uh, just with respect to its physiological properties or its neurochemical properties um, doesn't in itself have any stable meaning or reference, um, though it, the existence of various states of that kind will be necessary conditions for my producing things that uh, in some community of information shares have meaning and reference and other semantic property. Uh, Externalism is simply obviously true of something like bank balances. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Money. There's money. no money. The, you, looking at the, the computer program, looking at the data structure of the computer, it's like, how on the earth can this be money? You're never going to see it if you look locally. You have to see the role it's playing in the larger system. Then it's obvious. Mm -hmm. But now so, Alex says we must so scratch yeah, I mean, I'm going to definitely need an undergraduate version here. Because <laughs> because, so now tell me how this story works for something like or. Like? Like or. Or X or syntactic grammatic terms. Oh, so this is a story yeah. that works. Interest in actually, I don't think it works at all. But it, it, it's it, it works for cat, maybe. But but how does it work for something like or? All right, let me try. Let me try. Let me try. And, and the undergraduate version, though, not not okay. not the verbiage and the. All right, the, all right. You come across somebody in the supermarket, and you see they have a shopping list in their hand, they're going down. And the third thing on the, on the list says, cheddar or brie, okay? And you decide, well, this probably means get either some cheddar or some brie. And sure enough, that's what it means. And this, the, the or there has intentionality, it has meaning in virtue of the role it plays in the shopper's activities. So if it weren't the shopper having the activities, then or wouldn't mean a damn thing. It doesn't, you don't yeah. look at the ink. That's not where it is. You have to see how or is playing the role, not just on the piece of paper, but in the whole system of the projects of the shopper. Now, very simple. Rip up the list and put it in the shopper's head. Same story. The yeah. states in the brain have their meaning because they are being used by the person who is the shopper. A, a, a shopping list in the head is derived intentionality just as much as a shopping list on a piece of paper.